Today, we're doing a total brake design upgrade and Hydro Boost conversion to get this 1984 Dodge Ram Charger SE Royal Prospector 318 four-wheel drive wrinkling the pavement. Our first upgrade is replacing the original rubber brake hoses, which can stretch, rot, and swell with new stainless steel braided brake lines by Skyjacker. There's one at each corner up front, one over each axle. Here's the front, here's the long rear hose before and after. Now is a good time to inspect the hard lines for rust, leaks, damage, dents, or kinks. Ours check out, so we're not replacing them, but we will be upgrading the wheel cylinders. While we're down here, it's a good time to replace those old rotted and often missing rubber bump stops with fresh urethane. Ah. These vehicles can be a bear to stop, even more so when towing. So a quick sneaky way to upgrade rear bias and increase stopping power substantially is to upgrade the wheel cylinders. After removing the tires and drums, inspect the brakes for wear, damage, or missing parts. This truck is clean, so let's remove the old brakes to access the wheel cylinder. Use a proper line wrench to remove the hard line and two mounting bolts. Here is a side-by-side -side of our replacement wheel cylinder. You'll want to use a 37337, which is from a one-ton Chevy truck, but noticeably larger giving better rear stopping power. You can see it will require clearance of the back plate, both here at the bottom as well as the bolt mounting holes. Mark where you need to grind and let her rip. First, we'll use a coarse drill rotary rasp, followed by a Dremel for finishing. Note the finished product only needs removal of material from the top up to the boss plate and bottom down to the radius change and not on the sides, but the bolt holes will need enlarging as well. Slide in the larger wheel cylinder and check for proper seating and clearances. Next, replace the rotors, calipers, pads, drums, and shoes. I had one caliper that seized from sitting, and it's always wise to replace them in pairs. Spend a little extra for good ceramic pads and shoes. It's worth the added stopping power, performance, and safety in a behemoth like the Rambone. Now install all new brake hardware with the ceramic shoes, and don't forget to hook up the parking brake. Now, as fate would have it, both the booster and master cylinder on this truck failed simultaneously, so it was an ideal time and cost savings to upgrade to this used Hydro Boost assembly from a 2012 Ram 2500 that I got for 75 bucks from a junkyard. Four nuts secure the firewall studs, and there is one pedal retaining clip. The lines of the master cylinder were cut, leaving the fittings for me to swap with my factory lines. First, by cutting off the OEM fittings with a tubing cutter and using a flaring tool like this one to create the proper flare fitting. This part may scare some of you a bit, but it can be done by clamping very tight and using a little thread locker to prevent the flaring tool from walking up the line. Of course, another option if you're not comfortable flaring a steel line on the vehicle is to simply use the appropriate adapter fittings. You can reuse the stock pump and avoid removing it, but keep in mind, it's now responsible for powering not only the power steering, but the hydraulic brakes too, so it best be in top shape. This one was torched anyway, so I replaced it with one having a slightly longer return line for adding a 6AN compression fitting. A common mistake is in removing the bracket stud on the back of the pump. Not only does this mount the pump, it seals the reservoir and is reverse thread, which accidentally cracks the inner pump housing if tightened rather than loosened. Pay close attention to the high pressure fitting and buy the appropriate adapter, such as in these photos. Here are the original lines coming into the steering box from the pump. Mark the low and high pressure sides. Carefully measure the length, fitting type, as well as the orientation for new high pressure hydraulic hoses if you don't buy them with the Hydro Boost assembly. You will need adapter fittings here as well. You can have custom hydraulic hoses made at any tractor or hydraulic supply store. After getting the correct fitting selected and the hoses made, it's a good idea to install an inline filter on the low pressure return near where you need to install a Y fitting combining both low pressure returns. Fill it up with fluid, bleed the brakes and power steering systems, and you're ready to peel some chilies. Oh, hey guys, do it a solid. Smash that subscribe, level that like button, and nail that notification bell so we can keep bringing you awesome content. My work is done here.